you guys, you guys, I wanted to tell you about uh, something that the Lord God shows me sometimes. And sometimes all I have to do is think about it, just like ask a question because I'm curious about it. And so then he'll just show it to me again. So I'm talking about cells that I see in hell. Well, I see one in particular and okay, the topic is about cells that are in hell that people that go to hell get sent to. Like right now, hell is full of like they're jail cells, but these are cells that are made up of like a rock, like the floor is rock and the walls are uh, they have no symmetry it's just like a rock and bumpy rock you know so yeah in hell uh, God has shown me one particular cell and that cell uh, was meant for me because when I rededicated my life I'm just waiting for some some noisy trucks to pass by before I start talking so if I stop talking then it's because there are noisy trucks Okay, okay, sorry guys, that was the bus. All right, so around six or seven years ago when I rededicated my life to the Lord Jesus, God started to show me something and it was a cell and this cell was, was a cell that I was gonna go to had I died in my sins. And God, um, the way he communicates to you, like he, he communicates to people in different ways. Oh, I just saw a dragonfly go by. You, I don't think you guys saw it. I don't think you guys saw it. So anyway, um, the way God communicates to me, like sometimes I will hear him, hear him audibly in my head. You know, like when you, you speak in your head, you can hear yourself, right? You can hear your voice. Well, that's how I hear God. Many people hear him like that. So I will hear him audibly, but in my head, I will hear him audibly in my head. Other times I will hear him speaking to me in the form of feelings. It's hard to explain, but I will hear every word. I will, he I will hear every word only it's in the form of feelings. Other times it's just an instant sense of knowing. You just, you're just suddenly given uh, all of the information that God wants you to know instantly like a download he, he communicates to me and others in many many ways and it's it's too much to get into right now but anyway so one day guys I'm um, just right after I rededicated my life to the Lord Jesus God suddenly just started showing me th this cell it's really really dark it's dark guys it's a dark cell and there's a there's a um, like a a bar you know bars right like when when people are in jail or in prison the person is in a room and they're it's either like they're bars right sometimes they're bars and sometimes it's a door that the person is behind but in some jails they they have bars like for the door so the cells in hell they have uh, bars for like for the door for the door right you understand so anyway so I saw this cell and God was telling me that cell was you know designated for you if you had died in your sins and so that's that's what he was showing me and that was like six or seven years ago and I'll I will see it all the time just because I want to see it I will see it when I think about it all of a sudden I'll just see the vision of it I will see it God will show me God will literally show me a vision like I will see it I will see it all of a sudden if I just if I think about it all of a sudden he'll just show it to me and once in a while he'll just show it to me he's not reminding me hey be good or else I'm gonna send you there no he'll just show it to me and the reason for that is because yeah that was where I was gonna go and also to tell other people about it because this is the first time that that I, I have been that I've been uh, testifying about it so yeah, so then the cell is empty. That's another thing that I noticed, that the cell is empty. And every time I see the, the, the cell, God is showing it to me in real time. It's not a picture. It's not uh, an image that, that he showed me six, seven years ago. And then 
he's showing me again, showing it to me again like a photo album. No, every time, every time God shows me this cell, it is always in real time, meaning I am seeing it like um, live, okay? You know, like when you're watching a live program? Yes, so whenever God shows me that cell, it is in real time. I'm actually seeing it um, at that very moment live, okay? And the reason why it's uh, empty, God told me, He communicated to me, He said that the reason why this my cell is empty is because it is a, a reminder to the devil and other demons, but particularly to the devil, to remind him about the soul, about the soul that he lost. So, like, for example, for you people that are listening and watching this, watch, listening to this and watching this, for you who have genuinely uh, given yourselves, rededicated your lives to the Lord or gotten saved, your cells are now empty. Okay, your cells are now empty and they will never be, um, like another person will not go there because every cell, quote unquote, represents every person that would have died. Like for example, for you who are saved or rededicated your life, there is a cell down there for you. But because you say, you know, you got saved, you gave yourself to the Lord Jesus, it's now empty and nobody else will be placed there. Do you understand? Nobody else will be placed there as a reminder to the devil and every demon that your soul, your soul that was specifically supposed to go, specifically meant to end up there, okay, your soul that was specifically meant to end up there will no longer be there, will no longer be getting put in there. So another soul will not, woo, woo! Sorry guys, I had to duck because <laughs> a very giant, um, did it go away? Okay, it flew over me. I don't know if you caught it through the camera because I'm looking outside of the camera. So a, a very large dragonfly just flew by me. I don't know if it was the same one, but it went by. They're so pretty. So anyway, it just flew over my head and I had to duck. I had to duck. Okay, let me turn around to see. I mean, it's gone. Let me see. Hold on. Yes, it is gone. Anyway, whoa. Okay, a fly passed by. I don't know if you. I don't know if you saw that. Anyway, so. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. That's why. God makes sure that every cell down there, the cell that belonged to you and the one that will not belong to me or you, but the cells that were meant for you and I will now remain empty and not be uh, reoccupied by somebody else just to, it's to remind the devil and every demon that that particular soul has now been lost to hell. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? That that particular soul has now been lost away from hell. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the devil lost that soul. The devil lost that soul. That particular soul has not been lost um, to hell or from hell. You know what I'm saying? Not from hell. Away from hell. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's really good news, guys. So, every time I see this cell, I only ever see mine. God only ever shows me my cell. Again, it's not to remind me of where I'm going to go because I am rooted in the Lord Jesus. I am not going anywhere. I know what I've gained and I do not want to lose that. So it's just, I mean, he shows it to me because most of the time, like I said earlier, I'm always, I'm always wondering about it. Whoa, I think my neighbor's behind me my other, in her balcony and I can hear some stuff. I can hear, I can hear her making some noises. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear me, but anyway. Um, oh, there's a sailboat. I can see it all the way off there in the distance. That is called Woodbine Beach in Toronto. Okay, um, yeah, oops. Maybe that was the sound of a car or a truck or a bus. So yes, so guys, um, yes, so that, that cell I, I will always see it. I, I like seeing it. I don't, not, not that I wonder about it. I just, I'm very interested. Like, I like to see it because it's empty and it's no longer my place, you know? So, 
Yeah, and it's really amazing because before the Lord God showed me this cell seven years ago, I had no idea that there were cells. Um, I didn't know that there were cells for people. I, I, I only found out that there were cells after I started, um, when, when the Lord God told me to start watching a series of hell videos to show me, you know, about certain sins that I was doing and that he wanted me to stop, like gossiping and slandering and unforgiveness, then that's when I, I learned about um, cells. Um, yeah, like people who went to hell, visited hell, and they were shown cells. Yes, and I don't remember whether I don't remember whether I saw the cell before I saw those testimonies or after. But anyway, all I know is that the Lord showed me a cell. It belonged to me, and now it's empty, and it's it's it continues to be a reminder to the devil and all the demons that you know he lost this particular soul. And if you have truly given yourselves to the Lord and have truly been living for Him. You know, you, you're not just like a, a quote-unquote Christian who claims to be a believer, but on Facebook and all your social medias, you're posting all kinds of rubbish and garbage and filth and swearing and gossiping and even gossiping about politicians, guys. God will have you answer for that. He will have you answer for gossiping about politicians that you really cannot stand and still even hate. Okay? Because God tells us in the Bible that by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be, um, you will be, what's, how does it, how does it go? By you, by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be cleared, you know, something like that. Or you will be justified, right? So we have to be really careful about how we talk about other people. Now I'm not trying to say, oh, I'm better than you, but it is very easy for me not to gossip. That is something that he delivered me from when... Well, it wasn't a deliverance. It was just something that I stopped because I didn't want to go to hell for it. So it was very easy for me to stop gossiping. And it was very easy for me to stop, you know, slandering people. And then it was also easy for me to just forgive. That was very easy, you know. So guys, um, so yeah, you know, don't be this fake. For, for some of you, like, you know, there are people that I know on, on Facebook who I just recently found out they're not really living for God. They post so many things about God and, oh God, thank you so much for what, you know, how my life is, for what you've done for me and for how, where my life is going. Because of you, I would be nothing. Because of you, I wouldn't be here. All kinds of things, you know, like glorifying him and giving him thanks and, and just, you know, things that make you believe that these people really are hardcore, hardcore Christians. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But then when you get to find out about them when you when you um, find out other things about them okay I've I found out certain things about certain people about some Christians that I know and I, I was very disappointed because they are very fake and they're very weak when it comes down to it you ask them will you do this for the Lord and they're like, mm, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, and I'm like, well, I thought you said you were a true believer. Why do you call yourself a true believer? Well, I am a true believer. I just don't want to do that. And I said, well, then you are a traitor. You're not a true believer. And yes, I have said this to them in their face. I said, you are a traitor. You are a backstabber. You are someone who portrays like you are a Christian when you are not. You, you come off to the whole world like you are such a, dev a devoted Christian and you're not you're fake okay and they're like well you know it's just you know I, I don't really want to do this it's just not now just you know no I don't want to do that and I said well yeah well the thing is you are being very phony and you are hurting God you are betraying him because he's doing such and such a thing for you he came through for you and now this is how you're repaying him back and you're still expecting him you're, you're still expecting for him to bless you because there are other Christians that I've been talking to who have been who have who, who had been coming off as real Christians but then when I asked them what are you gonna do for him now that your situation is better they're like well I don't feel like honoring God with what he's now given me 
this is what they said to me. They said this to me and I said, well, you, you've just been blessed by God in a certain way and now you're telling me that you do not want to honor him. You are asking him to bless you. And now that you've received it, you're telling me that you are going to turn your back on him and say no. They're like, well, well, you know, it's just, I just don't feel like doing that. So I, I, I left it right there because you cannot, you cannot argue reason or reasoning into a person who, who has made up their mind about how they believe they should be relating, how they believe they should be relating to God. And these kinds of Christians disgust me. They make me repulse and I want to throw up all of my innards. This is how I feel about people like that. Okay, because they come off as people who are truly loyal to the Lord, but then when you find out more about them, more intimate details, I mean, I'm talking about intimate, like more about their personality and how they are, how they are living. This, this is the sort of thing that shocks a real Christian. And you become very, very disappointed and just really disappointed. But I did pray for these people and I asked the Lord, please uh, just deal with them about who they are and how they have just betrayed you because it's not right. The, the moment in time will come if they do not, you know, turn from this, this, this disgusting behavior, they're going to really feel the sting. They're going to feel the sting of their betrayal to God. And not even after I've told these people, you know, several times in each conversation that I've had with several of these people, was it enough to scare them straight? So sometimes, guys, some people who believe in God, but who just don't care about respecting Him, okay, they don't care about honoring Him and what He's done for them. They would just, they need to, uh, they need to feel the, the, the sting of their disobedience and their betrayal. Okay? Okay, guys.